I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to The Brain 202, Editing and Evolving Your Brain. Today's class is all about gardening, fine-tuning, and best practices for information organization. My name is Shelley Hayduck, and I'm co-hosting today's session with Matt Caton, our Director of Customer Solutions. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're going to start off with just a brief overview of uh, some different approaches and key features that you'll absolutely want to do to edit your brain. And I love this session because a lot of people, especially new users, they get started on a brain and then they think, oh my goodness, how do I change it? Or I'm not even going to move, attempt to change the section, I'm going to start a new brain. But the brain is designed to be a very malleable network of information with a lot of great editing tools. So um, I want you to lose your inhibitions and um, think about change. Don't be afraid to move things around. We'll show you how easy it is uh, to do that. So let me go ahead and get started here. So when is it time to change your brain? Um, you know, I, I guess uh, if you're not satisfied with your current structure, then you know it's time for change. Um, some, some very interesting indications, and I've deliberately left, messed up parts of my brain just to show you how we can clean them, is you might find that you have too many links under a single thought. Now sometimes people like that. For instance, uh, Jerry Mikulski's brain that has over 260,000 thoughts, he likes to see a lot of information down there. And I think people, it sort of contributes to that, ooh, impressive feel. And there's other people, especially if you're uh, designing a brain maybe for a support task or um, you know, sales, uh, sales relationships, you might want to sort of filter different uh, information through creating additional child thoughts, or we're going to get into thought types. So that's one thing you can look for. You can go through your airy thoughts. In general, if you have more than 10 or 12 thoughts, children below an active thought, you might want to consider either creating some thought types to further define that grouping of information or to create subcategories uh, for that section. And then the uh, other uh, issue that we bump into a lot, especially with corporate managers that map out all these, brain, these, these ideas and create all these categories, um, you also have to look that you might have too many thought categories. So if you have to get one, two, three, four clicks down to the most important information in your brain, well, you might need to do something different. And then, of course, outdated information. How do we maintain your brain? And we have some very excellent reports um, that you can do to always make sure your brain is up to date. So we're going to cover dragging and connecting of links, forgetting thoughts, a lot of linking and unlinking, and that's all done with our mass selection abilities. A lot of people aren't familiar with the, the ability to select more than one thought on mass, so we want to make get you really comfortable with that in today's session, and then get into some thought types and tags, and then also some various reporting options that will help you. So um, that's really the primary ways for effective categorization and evolving your brain are through the, the choice of your thought types, parent, child, or jump. So we'll cover those thought types, additional metadata that you can add to a particular thought as well as tags, and then link types describing how things are connected. And so with that, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, close my presentation here and start on a brain area. So let me just go ahead and start at the top of the brain here. So pieces in, of information in the brain, of course, are what we call thoughts. And a thought can represent any type of digital information. So when I click on a thought, it triggers all related pieces of information. Now, even though this is 202, just to level set, in case we have some new users on the call, I'm just going to explain the primary relationship zones because these are the zones that help us make choices and define how our brain uh, looks and how we categorize information. So it's always relative to your active thought. Anything below my active thought, so in this case I've clicked on my business, I've got siblings. These are subcategories. So if I was looking at a file folder system, these would be my subfolders. So I've got a category for active projects, meeting management, business development, engineering, marketing, operations, sales, clients. And so those are my child thoughts. And then to the left 
or sorry, the right, we have uh, siblings, thoughts that share the same parent. And then to the left, we have the jump thought, pieces of information that are related, but not necessarily a subcategory um, or a parent or a sibling. So I'm going to go ahead and click on clients. And uh, I'm going to see, I can see I've got a, a bunch of clients here. And if I go into media entertainment, I can see that I've got Time Warner as a thought. Now, the interesting thing about uh, thought relationships is I'm just looking at this brain, and I don't know that I need this category for my clients because I only have one client in the media and entertainment area. So now what I'm doing is I'm sort of looking uh, and making some decisions. I only have three nonprofits. Do I really need this organized that way? So uh, what I'm going to do actually is I want to move Time Warner and I want to move it right directly under clients. So I just dragged uh, again, and if I drag this way, the connection changes. So I can drag to change relationships. Now, first of all, just to go a little further, uh, before we get into moving placement, let's just talk about around the active thought. So let's say this CRM project is a, it's a concurrent project, not necessarily related to Time Warner. So I could move that as a jump. Or maybe the uh, CRM project is the main header um, of Time Warner. Maybe that's all we do with them as CRM projects. So we want to organize them by project so that would make that apparent. So what you can do is basically to change a relationship, simply drag all around the zones of your active thought and then and drop. So here I'm going to put it back as a child thought or I can move it as a jump thought, um, you know, or make it a parent thought. Now remember siblings are de derived relationships. So if I wanted to make this a sibling, I could actually move this under marketing. And so the way I do that is I'd actually now, now that it's not visible, I'd want to link, just start, create a link, this, just start typing in the first couple letters of it, CRM project, so there it is. So now in this case, I'm putting my CRM project under marketing, and you can see it's right here. And now when I look at Time Warner, well, I have to unlink it first too, because I don't necessarily want it as a, you don't want this happening where something is a parent thought, so let me unlink. So now you can see I've just got it under marketing. And then if I want to link it up, and so when I click on Time Warner, I just see it as a sibling over here in this area. So now it's, it's not really connected to Time Warner at all, but it's a, a, a CRM project over there. Now likewise, I've got a jump thought. I like to connect people as jumps because Time, or Fred Baxter advises Time Warner. He's the account director, but um, you know, that's why he's not a project. He doesn't belong as a child, but I could put him as a parent because he oversees the account. So I can simply drag and drop Fred above. And again, I'm deliberately you know, making these changes. And sometimes, in some cases, there's no right or wrong way to do this, um, you know, I, I like to actually have people as jumps just so I can see people, projects in one area. But um, this, I just want to show you how these changes can easily be made. Or maybe he's just one person working on this account. He's just one person I need to talk to, so I might want to have him as a child. So immediately you can see just by dragging things around how we want to change things. So that's another possibility. Now I'm going to go into my people section here and look at different thought areas. So I'm going to go over to Terry Mason, VP of Sales. Now you'll notice with each of these people, I'm actually organizing by thought type. So um, I've got a little bit of a hierarchy here where I've got Terry Mason, and we've got Elizabeth, who's the director, and then we've got managers, and then some other people. So uh, you can see how this all fits together nicely. Now in this case, I only have three different managers under this thought called manager. So this is what I call a useless category. So what if I'm just, again, pulling out scenarios that happen as you're creating your brain. I don't want this manager's thought in between Terry Mason and these other thoughts. 
So very easy solution to get rid of. And in essence, I want to move these guys up to Terry. Now there's a couple ways to do it. First of all, I could literally just uh, drag and drop these guys one at a time under Terry Mason. And then, and then of course, delete managers. But I want to, let me rec recreate that scenario because I also want to show you another way of doing this as well. Give you a few different options here. So let's say this is, there were a lot of thoughts. I can control click on the gate of my active thought and that's going to uh, any one of these gates. In this case, it's going to mass select all my child thoughts. So in this case, I have three of them. Now what I can do it, from here is I have them in my selection box. Now by the way, that's a command click if you're on a Mac. I'm on a PC today. Um, but for all you Mac users, same functionality, just a different key. I'm going to go up to Terry Mason, and now that Terry Mason is my active thought, I'm going to right click on my selection box again, and now you'll see at the bottom of my screen, just attention uh, down there, link as children of Terry Mason. So I can do, um, just to show you how this works, here we go. Now you can see the selection there. There is children. Maybe for some reason I wanted to link them all as jumps. So let me right click on that selection box and change them to jumps. And, or maybe, you know, for whatever reason the managers have taken over and they're all managing Terry. Okay, so let's whatever. Let's use that scenario. Let's move them up as parents. I just want to show you how easy it is to mass select and move them all at once with this very important and essential feature for editing your brain. So I'm actually going to go back and put them as children. And now that I've done that, uh, I don't need this thought managers. It's, it's a useless thought because I already have the managers organized up here. So I'm going to right click and select to forget a thought. So uh, forget, the brain has a two-tiered deleting system, much like your computer recycled them. So if I go ahead and select forget, it's gone, very simply gone. And uh, I can just go ahead and uh, move on with my day. Likewise, if I have a, let's just say a temporary staff member. And of course the brain has spell check, which I love. And I'm just going to go in and give this a type. Maybe this temporary staff member is coming in as a uh, manager as well. Okay. So we'll add that person. So here's my temporary staff manager. Again, I can go ahead and right click to uh, so, uh, forget that. Now, in terms of where these forgotten thoughts go, or if I make a mistake and I forget something I need to bring back, what you can do is actually go to your options uh, menu and select to show forgotten thoughts. And here you can see, um, they're right here, again, very similar to recycle bins. So if I want to select temporary staff member, you can see, or managers. Now in this case, um, you can select all and, and then select delete, and then they're permanently gone. This is a good thing to do, especially if you're publishing and you've deleted a bunch of stuff. You always want to clear your forgotten thoughts out. But let, I have, let me do another scenario here. Let's say I want to actually remember this temporary staff Mem uh, member. I've got it selected here. Let me hit remember. So now it's back in my brain. And then the, the managers category, I definitely don't want that. So I'm going to delete that. So you can see this is just an example of how you can organize and change things very nicely in the brain. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue to evolve this section here. So um, I've sort of got the opposite going on here. We have a lot of executives here, and Barbara is way too busy. So um, Barbara is going to ha hire a, uh, she's going to hire Sally Jones, who is going to serve as COO of the company. And that makes her an executive. So I'm just going to go ahead and give her the executive's top thought type and adder and Sally Jones CEO. But now what I want to do is I actually want to put Sally, I want to put our VP of finance, our VP of services and strategic services under these areas. Um, so now what I'm doing is I'm doing a change here to kind of streamline my organizational structure. And the other thing that's weird is there's no reason that uh, Tim 
and Harold should be reporting to Barbara because um, you know they're quite uh, they're only director levels and I can see that oh they're part of IT so uh, what I'm going to do actually let's see we've got uh, Jim is I'm going to move these guys under Jim and you can see now and this manager should really go under Terry Mason he's a salesperson so now you can see that I've cleaned this area up I've uh, I, I had a variety of, of, of different people reporting to one person now a lot of them are going to to Sally who is a COO and then we've got some other direct reports here and actually Judy uh, unfortunately is no longer with us she retired so what I can do here, I can see I do personal camping with Judy, but that's fine. I'm simply going to uh, forget Judy. Now the other option is if you know you want to delete something right away, you can hold down the shift key. Again, that's the shift key and right click. And that will bring up the delete option right away. So that's, so if you don't want to have to go back to the your forgotten thoughts area and clear that. I mean, either way is fine. I just want to give you guys options. So I'm just going to hit delete. And there we go. We've got uh, we've got Judy all gone in the brain. So again, very easy to evolve. Now I'm going to go quickly to my client section, and I've got a few categories here that don't really make sense. So for instance, media and entertainment. Again, I've got that problem of over categorization. I just have the one thought. It's already tagged as a VIP thought. So again, I'm simply going to drag Time Warner up and I'm going to sunset this category by forgetting it. So now that's, that's looking really clean. Um, you know, I can go ahead and do that if, I, if for, for whatever reason. I've only got four travel clients and I don't need this category. I'm going to go ahead and select, click on clients, move these directly as children under clients. You can see how that works. And now I don't need my thought for travel clients. So here's now you can see this is looking a little bit more fuller. So when I come in I can immediately see my travel clients. Um, I also see my Time Warner who is a VIP. And this is also an example and I'm uh, Matt is actually going to cover how to create new thought types and tags but this is an example of organizing by type rather than subcategory. So in this case rather than having a whole subcat a, a, the, the a child thought that says travel and then clicking one more level down to see those thoughts here I've just got the travel thoughts or the clients that are under the the category of travel with the thought type and they're linked right at the top so again there's no right or wrong way to do it I could do the same thing with nonprofit instead of having this as an intervening thought I could create a thought type here so let me just go ahead and move these guys up and I'm going to uh, sunset forget that and now I've got United United Nations United Way um, and Red Cross as uh, thoughts right at the top here and again if, if this area grows and it's getting a little confusing I can easily reinstate categories as well so you can see manufacturing has a lot of different thoughts here so um, you know, I'm going to leave that, and that's going to bring me to another scenario, which um, we've covered sort of how to get rid of categories and prune that. But um, more than often, more than often, and here's a, a neglected personal area. It's sort of the other approach. We find that um, you know, especially you know, our business, we tend to organize and categorize really well in the personal life. Oh, we'll throw everything in here. I'm, I'm doing a renovation project. I'm organizing furniture, gardening. So you know, it all goes into personal and lo and behold, um, it can start to look like this where it's like, whoa, this is a lot of information. How do I, this, this looks like a mess. What, what approach do I take to further sub-organize this information? So if you have a section of your brain that looks like this, don't panic. It's very easy to fix. Um, what you want to do is sort of search for commonalities and and subgroupings within this section because what I want to do is I want to further subcategorize this group of information. So first of all, I'm noticing a lot of stuff on vacation. Um, so I'm going to create a new thought called vacation and travel. And my, my plan here is just to create about eight or nine uh, superordinate categories that are that these other things are going to fall under. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So vacation 
and travel is going to be my new main thought. Now when you're doing this, you can even pin this thought right here. And I'm going to go ahead, so this is going to be a nice new uh, section in my brain, a new hub for all these thoughts. And I'm going to uh, select an icon and uh, vacation and travel. Here's a nice little picture of a sunset. So I've got that there. So now what I can do very easily, these ones you can see right now it's just a vacation and travel is just a, a one child. But when I click on it, these guys move as siblings. And I get these scroll bars here. So there's a lot that fits under this category that's going to clean this up. Diving. That's going away, and oops, and, and so you're going to have to move these things around. Uh, now, under diving, that take that added actually got rid of a lot of them. Hotels, that's something else. Um, you know, we can kind of, and now what I'm doing is I'm sort of just going through all these areas. So now when I come back to this area, it's a little bit cleaner, but the other thing I can do is I can control click on certain thoughts. So I'm going to control click on airline numbers, um, camping, Caribbean, Cozumel vacation. So I'm just going through this list and looking for everything that has to do with vacation and travel. Okay, going through the list, going through the list, pet sitters, yes. Okay, Universal Studios, yes. Vacation activities, yes. So now what I'm done is I've selected all these. They're, they're highlighted here. I'm going to go to vacation and travel and I'm going to select to link as children under my new master category, vacation and travel. So there they are. Now this is great, but I don't want them connected to personal or I'm uh, missing the point of this subcategory. So I'm going to activate personal and now I'm going to unlink these guys from personal. So you can see, boom, it's, it's getting all cleaned up. Uh, I'm going to do that for another category. Uh, I'm going to create a new category called personal finance. Okay, and again, this is going to be a hub for all my personal information. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a, a nice little uh, icon here. So let me see here. Oopsie, let me just go ahead and create a new icon. So I can get to the icon by right clicking or I can actually go ahead and in this case select to click on the icon and grab an icon. So personal finance probably wants something to do with business. Let me go ahead and grab this chart and that's my personal finance. So now what I can do, and again you can do it either way, I can drag my bills, my banking, um, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Let's see, just going this way. Insurance, premium, job opportunities, um, you know, all that sort of loans for renovation, my mortgage thought, my investments. So now when I'm dragging this way, I, it automatically disconnects from personal. So I could also have mass selected. So just to give you guys ideas, now upcoming expenses and upcoming bonuses as well as taxes and then saving strategy, retirement planning. I've got a lot of stuff under uh, uh, personal finance here. So again, let me show you what this looks like. So now what I've done is I've really changed that. So now you can see it's getting smaller. I've got personal finance. Now I've still got a few other things here. I have a lot of house projects. So let me just quickly create a few more categories and zoom through this. So house projects, um, let me go ahead and control click this, my kitchen renovation, my bathroom stuff, my furniture, um, and all my renovation stuff that I have here. So another thought there. Um, that all makes sense to go under house projects, new garage door. There's another one there. So again, so I'm going to select house projects and now I've got all these selected and I want to link as children of house projects and then I'm going to go back to personal and I want to unlink them from the personal area. So you can see now things are slowly, uh, slowly but surely starting to be cleaned up. Remember how big and overwhelming this area is? Let's do another one, family and friends. 
Okay, so, oh, and you can see I need to rename that. So I can just click Rename Edit here, just get rid of that little typo there. Okay, and if I want to add an icon, you know, I can go ahead and do that. Um, I can, or, but for now I'm going to save time. So I'm going to add my family ancestry, my friends, Sally, mom and dad are going under this category, of course. And, uh, you know, just all that stuff. Oh, there's an interesting article on I'm tracking stuff on Generation Z and then my goal of more family time. So you can see now that is coming together. Now I also have a lot of hobbies in this brain. So let me create another category and I'm going to call this hobbies. And I can activate hobbies. And again, I'm going to make uh, add an icon for hobbies. Let's just go ahead and art and education. And uh, I'll just add an easel here for hobbies. Now I'm going to move gardening, golf, and I'm sort of deliberately doing uh, health and fitness is sort of a hobby or preoccupation. And, uh, you know, you can see what else I've got as hobbies. Sometimes it's easier to look this way other than in, in the jump zone, so if that's the case. So let's go ahead and organic gardening, music, style and culture, movies and entertainment. Um, all that I'm going to put under hobbies. So I'm going to add, now uh, release my mouse button because I was control clicking and I'm going to uh, link these as children of hobbies. And now under personal, I'm going to unlink this selection. Now you can see, and then finally, I've got a lot of stuff on animals and nature. So let me just go ahead and create a new category, animals and nature. Activate that. Let's just give it a cute icon. Let's do maybe a uh, cat here. And now from here, speaking of cats, let's just go ahead and add cats dogs, um, living things that I classified, um, you know, all that stuff. Is pet care information could also go under there as well. So you can see um, how that makes sense and you can continue to evolve this. Like for instance, health projects, renovations should be under there. So let me just go ahead and drag renovations under health projects. Um, so you can see and then I'm looking at kids kids should be under family and friends. So let me just go ahead and move that. And I can actually do it this way too. I can link it this way, family and friends. So link that there and then I'm going to unlink it from personal. So again, there's many ways of doing that. Of course, family and friends. Let me just give that an icon real quick uh, in the people area. So now you can see I've got that and I still have these thoughts in my uh, selection because I want to link these as children of house, of, no, sorry, not house projects, uh, hobbies. Oh yes, they're good there. We're done. Uh, we can deselect them. So now what I've done is I've cleaned this up quite a bit. Um, you know, and this is what Jerry Mikulski would call gardening and house projects too. Um, you know, you can put stuff like the car. I'm classifying that as car. And you know, they can go under more than one category. That is the benefit of the brain. Car might also fit under uh, personal finance, right? So now I've made a connection to both areas as well. Or if we want to go to that thought on pet care, which I'm just acting, pet care information, animals and natures, but that also belongs under vacation and travel. You can see here how I'm sort of organizing to uh, divvy things up. So this is another example here. I don't know if you remembered how overwhelming this section looked like. Now it's pretty pretty interesting and a career development, uh, that's a thought that is empty. You can see I've got nothing under it. There might be a thought like that that you started that you don't want. So I'm actually just going to forget that. So this is coming in nice and tight. It's looking really good. House projects, let me just give that a quick icon. Let's give it a house. And now um, you can see just how much cleaner and organized. So you know what, don't stress if you've thrown a bunch of stuff in your brain in one section. You can see how interesting it is to organize. Now this was uh, an organization strategy, strategy where I 
deliberately created additional child thoughts in between this information. Remember, all this stuff was linked under personal, and then I and all this stuff was linked directly under personal. So I decided to create these extra categories to further organize and kind of streamline what I'm looking at. If you like to see a lot of information on your screen at one time, another way to do that is, or an additional, an additional way, they're very complimentary as well, is through thought typing. So for instance, my investment area here, I kind of like, you know, ooh, I'm in investments and all that, like seeing a bunch of stuff on the screen. So I just have thought types here. And what I do here is I select to arrange by type. So all my thought types on investment tools are in one place. Hot topics for my money are in another. In investment resources are, are all displayed together. And I'm going to show you a couple more examples of that real quick. Let me just go to the teaching and learning brain here. And um, a couple examples. If I go to my U.S. President's area here, this is an example of organizing by thought types where, um, first of all, I actually have a thought type for Democrats, Federalists, and Republican. So in this case, I'm, I have that arranged by type. Now, if I go by name, this is another way to organize in a brain. You can numerate thoughts. So number one, this is going in a chronological order of all U.S. presidents. But here's an example where I do want to know what political party each of these guys and uh, are associated with, but um, you know, I don't necessarily want to have two subcategories that say Federalist, Republican, Democrat. I want to see them right here connected to United States presidents. So the way we've done that is we've created thought types. And then like I said, once you have the thought types, in this case I also wanted my children to have a chronology to that. So basically um, that's really cool. We can show you how to do that. Uh, if I want to create a, uh, let me just say, chronology. So chronology, all you'd have to do is go, let's say number one is apple, semicolon, number two is pear, semicolon, number three is grape, semicolon, Number four is blueberry. Okay, not to get in, we can even get into thought types as well. Oopsie, number four, let me just fix that typo. So what I'm doing, first of all, uh, this is using the semicolon to indicate multiple thoughts. One, two, three, four to indicate an order. Let me hit the checkbox. So now you can see these things are appearing in order. Now if I were to thought type them, I can decide. So that's, that's one way to create a chronology. So in this example, a chronology of thoughts was created by numerate, numerating each one, and then thought typing was added to that. So now I have the ability to uh, arrange thoughts by name, which gives me the chron chronological view of it. And then I can change this to name by type. And now I'm going to see, you know, which presidents belong to, you know, what political party. I can also arrange by, ooh, last date modified. And now, of course, you can see I've done most work on President Barack Obama. So he's appearing first in this case. So, you know, this is all just a really great way of arranging thoughts in general. If I have types, I'll select type. Otherwise, your default will be to go by name. If you have no numeration on your thoughts, it'll be alphabetical listing. Just another idea um, for organizing uh, a bunch of information. And then finally, just another uh, aspect of some of the benefits and, and different sort of categorization scenarios with thought types. Um, I want to show you my living things, uh, animal classification. That's another way we use thought types because normally you have in the animal world uh, kingdom and then phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So rather than having each of those distinct scientific classifications as separate child thoughts, I've created, there we are again, thought types for them. So I can see kingdom the scientific domain of classifying a living uh, creature, the first level is kingdom. So rather than having a thought that says under living things kingdom, I've just created a nice sort of peachy color for kingdom. And you can see that in your mouse over that, you can see that the word and kingdom. And then if I want to go into animals, 
Uh, I can see you know, the mammals ca category. I'm in kingdom and Amelia, and then from there, these are the phylums, the next level of classification. So they're in an orange. And phylum core data, that just means animals that have a backbone. Um, so now we're in the core data category. And then I can go into the class. So the classes of living creatures with a backbone. This is another level of scientific classification are amphibians, birds, mammals, or reptiles. So from there, we're going to go into mammals. And then we get into the order. So there's different orders of mammals. So we'll go into carnivores. Um, and then, of course, we can get into the family. So we're into cats and then the, the genus as well, and then the actual species, the species type. So again, this is another way um, that just helps you understand how you can use these thought types um, if you feel like you don't want to create all these child thoughts and click, 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 clicks. Think about maybe a combination of, you know, these different intervening categories combined with thought types. And I think that's going to be a great segue to Matt's section because he's actually going to show you how to create thought types uh, and tags and link types from scratch as well. So Matt, unless there are any questions, I'm going to pass presenter over to you now. Great. Send it on over. And um, I think we've seen some great examples of the many different options that you have uh, whenever you are going through and mm -hmm. editing your brain and, and reorganizing your brain. Um, I have the same scenario, so I'm sharing my screen now, and as you can see, I've got an area of my brain that is uh, basically in need of a refresh. It's time to reorganize in this particular area. Um, I can see on my last uh, December meeting, uh, actually we had a meeting this January, I can see, sort of lost in the clutter of this area of my brain. Um, and I've got a lot of new tasks. I look down at, at uh, what took place during this meeting. This particular project is really going to take off. Um, so as this project grows, I'm just on a thought for an ad campaign for a client in my brain. And as this campaign continues to evolve, I'm going to have a lot more meeting notes and documentation and so on. And it's already getting hard for me to find exactly what I'm looking for. So some recategorization, some gardening is, is in, uh, uh, definitely needed in this area of my brain. Now, I'm going to take the approach that Shelly shared with us where we create different thought types. Um, yes, I could create a subthought called meeting notes, a subthought called presentations, and so forth, and just drop and reorganize my thoughts that way. But for the time being, I'm going to create some new thought types, and I'll share with you some other advantages to using thought types um, in your brain in this particular area. So the first thing I'm going to do is capitalize on a few of the existing thought types I have. I see Donnie and Steve are two people that are actually helping me with this project. Um, I can right-click on their thought and change their thought type to manager. I really want them to stand out. So if I need a little assistance with a document that I'm writing, something of that nature, Right away, you can see I can hone in on those two thoughts and get directly to them. But what's more is I can also simply make them jump thoughts, sort of separating them from the group of documents that I have. Uh, they're not subcategories of the world is yours. Uh, they're people that are assisting me with this project. So I've got them moved over as jump thoughts. I can still click to get to Steve, see what other projects that he's working on. More importantly, I can see his role in these specific projects. Uh, so Steve is the manager for our, our client, Red Cross. He's the graphic artist for Disney. For The World is Yours, I'm going to click on the link between the two thoughts and define his relationship. Um, so I can click again to just go in and edit this link and type in a name. So Steve, let's say, is the uh, he's going to be proofreading everything that gets sent out to this client, all of my presentations, all of the ad campaign, paperwork, and so forth. He's proofreading everything. Um, so I can edit that link, or knowing that I'm going to have proofreaders on many different other projects, and I'm going to be using that link type over and over again, I can set up a new link type. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to link type. I don't see proofreader here, so I'll click on new type and type it in. 
So now I can clearly see that Steve is the proofreader for all documentation going out to this client. Um, if I want to modify how the proofreader links will always look like, again, I can highlight it one more time. So I'll click on proofreader. And you may notice that down below, my thought tool tab changes to a link tool tab. So now I can modify this specific link, or you can see there's a little button on the far right. I can modify how all proofreader links will look. So I'm going to click on this arrow to open the link type window and say all proofreader links are going to be, uh, we'll make them stand out as green. So that'll stand out nicely in my brain as my brain continues to evolve from all the different projects I'm working on. My proofreaders will have that nice green link. So I can visualize that and identify it really quickly. So now I'm not even categorizing my thoughts. I'm categorizing the relationship between the two, which is just another extra bit of content that I need to better understand my brain. So let's go ahead and start creating some new thought types. Again, I've got a few thought, existing thought types and I'll identify those now. I've got a thought type called design resource. So again, I'm going to use Shelly's uh, tool of, I'm on a PC today, so I'm going to control click on a series of thoughts and say that these are design resources. I'm clicking on some uh, art graphics I'm going to use as well as a few web pages. Uh, I've got several different web pages that I'm trying to emulate for my client. Those are resources that I'm going to share with my designers um, at our next meeting to see if we can create the same type of web presence for our client. So that to me is a design resource. I'm not shopping on these other websites for other things. I'm using their, their look and feel as design ideas, creative ideas. So very quickly I can identify those thoughts with the control click. I then right click over on the right and I set those all up as uh, thought type design resource. So right away, those are identified for me in my grouping, and I can also right-click Arrange Thoughts by Thought Type and start chunking them all together for even easier visual identification. So now let's create some new thought types from scratch, and there are a few different ways to do that. Um, I'm going to start out with this 2016 sales forecast. I've got a lot of documents down below, and I'm going to have many more that are part of the project life cycle. And I always refer to those as life cycle documents. Sales reports that we use at meetings, uh, sales forecasts and, and so forth, client uh, previews and so forth. I'm going to right click on this thought and create a new thought type. So my thought type for my campaign life cycle doesn't exist yet. I don't have, oh, I do have life cycle. Well, I'll create a different one then. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a meeting note. Uh, I'll right click on that. And there I can see that I do not have the thought type uh, meeting note. I'll just scan through and, and see. No, I do not. So thank you for the brain for displaying this list and not letting me duplicate a thought type. So I'm going to create here a new thought type for this meeting note. A lot of meeting notes in the future, and I like to group those all together. So this thought type will be called meeting notes. And now I can specify, now that I've created this thought type, I can specify what all of my meeting note thoughts will look like and how they'll be identified within the brain uh, for that quick visual identification. So again, we can change the color. I'm on the meeting notes thought type thought, and I can click on the color wheel. So all of my meeting notes will be this nice light blue. And I click on the little icon image right next to the thought name. And here I'll just select a pencil. And so now as we can see under the world is yours, my new ad campaign, all of my meeting notes will also have that visual identity. So I can go through and right click on a thought type and specify that this is a meeting note as well as here's one from November. But additionally, now that I've created this thought type, as I'm creating new thoughts, uh, so let's say I've got some ideas on just the topics we'll be discussing for February's upcoming meeting. So I can just say Feb 2015. I no longer need to identify the thought as a meeting note. The thought type will take care of that for me. So February 2015, let me go back and I'm going to start over with that because I wanted to show you a feature. So I'm going to shift right click on Feb and go ahead and delete that thought. 
So quickly delete it. I hadn't added any content yet anyhow. So February 2015, and as I'm creating the thought, I can click on the thought type and identify this as a meeting note. So as I'm actually creating the thought type, that meeting note thought type can be, uh, can be applied. And once again, easily grouping my thoughts together. I want to show you one more way to create thought types. Um, and I've got a few documents that fit in as uh, life cycles. So let's identify those just really quickly. This is a life cycle document as well as my launch party thought type life cycle. So these remaining documents that you see at the end, I can leave them untyped. There's no problem with leaving untyped thoughts uh, within your brain, uh, but they do all share a, a common sort of feature, which is these are all components of presentations that I'm presenting to my client. Um, so I do want to identify them all as presentation thought type, which I do not have. Another way to create a thought type is from your thought types tool tab down below. So you can see this, again, is of all of my types. I can just simply activate, uh, let me go through the list here. So this uh, oh, project timeline, that falls into a different category. Why eSolutions? This is a thought, uh, a, uh, a document that we will be using as a presentation for the client. So I'm just going to click on the green plus right here in my thought uh, types list and say presentation. And now that I have presentation, I can click on any of these thoughts in the list to identify what they'll look like, the color, the icon that will be assigned with them. So here presentation has been selected for me. I can go back to the thought tool tab and say all of my presentations will be this purple color and I can click on the plus sign here or right click on the thought and select to uh, select thought icon. And so I love, and you notice Shelly was doing this well, as well, we were selecting thought icons from our pre-built library and I can go directly into, let's say, media for this one since this, this is a presentation and uh, I'll use this little film slide. Kind of nice, I'd like all my presentations to have that identity. And once again, when I go back to the world is yours, I can categorize these remaining documents. So client preview, my demo script, YE solutions and the winning edge are all going to be part of my thought types of presentations. There we go. And finally, the last component, there's that project timeline. I'll go ahead and close my selection box and really quickly identify that also as a life cycle. So the benefit of creating these different thought types, as you can see visually, completely different. What once was pretty monochromatic, um, I was sort of uh, stumbling through trying to find my meeting notes, my most recent meeting notes. I easily could have missed something because they all simply blended together. Now I've got this nice visual presentation in front of me so I can go right to my grouping of meeting notes, my grouping of presentations and so forth. But more importantly, also start running reports against this data. I can filter my searches or my reports using thought types. So I'm going to go down to my reports, and you'll notice if I refresh, I have an alphabetical listing of all the thoughts in this brain, so almost a thousand thoughts in this brain. But if I'm specifically doing a little bit of research for other clients on some of the art assets, some of the, um, uh, some of the documents or designed uh, elements that I used for other presentations, for other um, uh, ad campaigns, I can filter my search report and say, all right, show me all thought types that are of, and we'll quick, quickly go to ad campaigns, or I can go to design resources. So now I just created this particular thought type, but you can see that I can easily get there very quickly by scanning through this, this report. But also I can create what we call um, nested thought types or sub thought types. All of these different components, presentations, meeting notes, um, 
all of my design uh, resources. Those are all different components that go into my ad campaigns. So what I can actually do is, and you notice if I do a search, I can go directly to the ad campaign thought type. But in addition to having actual thoughts that are ad campaigns, I can link to ad campaign all of my design resources. So there's my design resources. And by linking design resource, a thought type of another thought type, I've actually made that what we call a sub thought type. And I'll do that one more time with another component. I'll use my meeting notes. So there are my meeting notes. That's my meeting notes thought type that I've connected to the ad campaign thought type. And so now if I run a report to show me all of my thought types that are ad campaign, you can see in the report list down below, I not only see all of my actual ad campaigns, but I see the components of those ad campaigns. So there are my meeting notes. There are my design resources, etc. So I've created a sub thought type. And if we take a look at the thoughts tool tab, so there are my thought types. You can see they're classified. It's just subtly indented. There's ad campaigns and the subcategories of ad campaigns our meeting notes and design resources. And I can create all the different components that make up an ad campaign and make them sub thought types of the ad campaign thought type. You notice I've done that also down below with people. So I can easily see all of my, my people, uh, whether they're a director, an engineer, an executive, a manager, and so forth, or run a port report specifically on directors and engineers. So sub thought types are a great way to just add that extra tier of classification to all the thought types you're creating. And really quickly, another example we have are thought tags, another great way to classify a thought. I'm gonna jump really quickly back to the world is yours. And this is an ad campaign that I am really focused in on right now. My marketing director has said, we need to get this completed and really impress this client by February. This is sort of one of my top tier priorities. So I'm going to mark this, you can see I already have marked this as urgent and important. That is a thought tag and I can click on this to go directly to my urgent important uh, grouping of thoughts. And you can see there are completely different types of thoughts, thoughts that would normally not be connected to one another, people, projects, servers, engineers, locations. But there's something about that thought that is urgent and important. It needs my immediate attention. And so every Monday morning when I log in, I'll go directly to my urgent, important thought tag. And we can create thought tags very easily. Again, here in the thought tool tab or by right clicking on a thought, I'll go back to the world is yours. And I'll right click to create a new thought tag. Let's say this particular ad campaign is only going to be taking place in our Chicago market space. So I type in, in Chicago. Now I could just simply type in Chicago, New York, Seattle, San Francisco, what have you. But that would sort of spread them out alphabetically in the list. So I like to start my thought tags with um, keywords or sometimes special symbols to group them together. You'll notice what I mean. I'll go ahead and check that. So now you can see the world is yours ad campaign. It's urgent and important. It's also in Chicago, in our Chicago market space. Um, so there are my other cities that I deal in, in London, in Los Angeles, in New York. Nice and compact grouped together in my list. And my other thoughts, urgent, important, urgent, not important, not urgent, etc. I simply start those with an asterisk. Again, so they can quickly be grouped together and identified at the top of my full tags list. And I can do a search really quickly by typing in an asterisk and getting directly to you know, all of my urgent, important items that way as well. So I know the symbol, asterisk, asterisk, and I can go directly to my urgent and important tasks. Once it's no longer urgent important, I simply can reclassify it. So let's say we've taken care of all the urgency. It's still an important um, client, something that I'm actively working on, but nothing urgent, nothing that, that is due this week. I can simply uncheck that and recategorize it, assign a new thought tag to this. Now I often turn my visualization of thought tags on and off for presentations just to let people know that that feature is there. At uh, last time I visited this brain, obviously I turned it off. So I'm gonna go into my options and in preferences. And this is just another great uh, um, option for you is to actually display. So I'm gonna uncheck here. You can see I'm on the brain tool tab. I'm gonna uncheck to hide tag hints. And my tags actually start showing up right there in the brain. Uh, depending on how many tags and how long your tags are, sometimes 
I find it easier just to leave that tag window open and access my tags that way. But if you want that visualized in the Plex, that's certainly an option for you. You can turn that feature on and off, whether you want those to be displayed front and center. And with that, Shelley, I think I'll hand it back over to you. I saw some questions popping up along the way, and we're coming up on the hour, so we can see if we've got some additional questions about gardening within the brain. Excellent. Yes, we do. And there were, um, I'm glad you got to thought types because there have some very interesting questions. Uh, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the last question about um, Jacques mentioned, uh, you know, what if I, an idea, it, what if an idea like an object is classified as a database in the brain? Can you include in our presentation an overview how the same idea can be treated because classifications are arbitrary and sometimes you have a different perspective. So I like that you were um, showing thought tags because just to be clear, so for thought, the, the way we add these additional semantic meanings and classifications, thought types, you can only have one thought type per thought. That's just designed to be the overarching feature. But if you have a brain, um, and this happens a lot in our manufacturing industry and pharmaceutical brain, I don't even know if you want to pull that up, where a drug or a object will have multiple attributes, all being equal. So in that case, what you want to do is use thought tags. That's a great example of thought tags. And let's not forget, we've talked, we're talking a lot about thought tags and types. Multiple classification, that's what multiple parents are for as well. So we are so wonderful at multidimensional classification that there's so many ways to do it. It's really kind of what works for you. So, and, and Matt, yeah, if you want to pull up an example of that fabulous and, and in this network database map, that would, that would be great to talk about uh, objects or ideas that have more than one classification. Absolutely, and here we've got an example of that. I just quickly went to um, uh, databases as an example, but yes, these are all databases. So that obviously is a good choice to make the thought type. When I'm doing a search, I'm doing a search for the mail database or uh, some type of engineering database. So I can easily find all my databases, but the thought tags, I went ahead and turned the feature on so you can visualize it. Um, I've got different types of databases, databases that are currently used as a backup databases, databases that are in production. Um, this particular database, really interesting, it's a backup database that recently went into production. So that is actually a, sort of a red flag to me. Which is it? Is it in production or is it uh, a backup database? It recently went live. Does it have all its proper securities applied? Does it have all of the right access levels? I need to review that. So by seeing that it's both flagged as a backup and in production, um, I need to see what's going on and click on this database and find out exactly which client is handling this database. Sometimes I'll have other information attached depending on my access to the database as far as um, who's managing that database. Here I can, I can find Remedy is being used uh, for the Remedy application. Sam Smith is the manager in London handling that database. So if there's questions about that, I need who I need to know or I can find out who to go to and also who to inform uh, that this database is going down. So Remedy is an application being used by IT support. I can contact Tanya, manager of IT support, and let her know that uh, this database, Sam, is going to be taking it down and, and making some modifications. So the thought tags applying those extra attributes to a thought type to further identify and let you know the condition or where it stands or the importance levels um, of the data that you're looking at. Okay, great. And then another question from Jacques is um, how can we have more than one icon in the thought? And the way to do that would just be to take an image of what you want. So I'd like you to cover so we're talking about editing and evolving the brain, adding images to thoughts, both through copy and paste and image capture, and then wallpaper as well. So there's lots we can do visually to evolve our brains. We've all been, I've been using the brain's built-in icons for most of my sets, um, but there's um, some other fabulous ways to get images on thoughts and, of course, behind them as your wallpaper. Absolutely. So let me bring up a, uh, a web page here. I'll just bring up thebrain.com. 
And let's say we want to give some people some instructions on the start screen. So let's say we're going to be sharing this brain with other users. We've got down in the notes section of this this thought, you know, click this button, go here, go here, go here. A lot of times it's easier just to say, hey, this is what you're going to see on your screen where you need to click. Um, quite often I'm taking screenshots of, um, you know, important steps or processes or products uh, that people need to see. Here's what it actually looks like. Um, so rather than having just an icon of a star for the start screen, Let's have a picture of the start screen itself or an area of the start screen that you need to click on. So let's say I'm trying to guide someone that here's where they need to click to get the free download of the brain. Um, on this particular thought, I'm going to right click on the thought itself and select to capture a thought icon. Now Shelly and I today have been going into our icon library quite a bit to get a nice little um, just icon image, a simple image to identify a topic or a thought. In this case, I'm grabbing a screen grab. So my brain is minimized. If I need to bring my brain back up, this is an interesting little tip. You can hit the tab screen and take an actual screenshot of the brain. Uh, but I'll tab again and make that go away. And this time, I don't need the whole web page. I just need to focus on this one area uh, of the web page. So that's what I use the crosshairs to highlight. And now when I mouse over that, I've got a nice zoomable icon, zoomable image um, of uh, whatever it is I'm directing my attention to. And again, as Shelly mentioned, it could be a, if you're looking for multiple icons, um, you can simply line up. You can sort of stage an image. Here's what I want to see on this thought stage that in the background and use this screen capture feature to make that the zoomable icon for that thought. Oh, I think you're on mute, Shelley. Thanks, Matt. Yes. Sure. Uh, okay. So if you could also cover another brain with different wallpaper and copying pasting icons from the web as well. Absolutely. I really like uh, changing the wallpaper. We had some very business brains today, so we had a very clean, simple backgrounds on our business brains. Shelly and I, depending on the, the webinars, you know, sometimes we have a lot of fun with the, uh, the wallpaper, really emulating the subject matter. If it's a brain about writing or about cars or hobbies and things like that, we have a lot of fun with the wallpaper. And it's really great if you are uh, building multiple brains for different specific topics so you know which brain you are in currently from the, the wallpaper. And it's very easy to do that. I always like to, now I can capture the image, come in, right click and paste wallpaper. That's one simple self-explanatory option. I like to show people that you can go into your preferences and if you click on this brain tool tab, from here, not only can I change the wallpaper, but I can also easily access all the different components to change the color of the links and the gates and the thoughts and the text itself. Uh, so I can really make the wallpaper uh, work with the color code or the color scheme that I'm going with. So I'm going to select a new wallpaper for my current brain. And if I just go into my computer on my C drive, I've got a wallpaper folder here. And uh, I'm just going to grab this city wallpaper and say I'm going to be using this brain for a client in New York. And I want to have a very edgy kind of uh, funky city wallpaper. I should have left that window open. You can see now why. I've got blue links on blue wallpaper. And it's very hard to see what's going on. So once again, I'll just pop right back into my preferences and go up to my brain. And this is going to be an easy fix for me. I'm just going to change whoops, my links to be, so normal links instead of being blue, let's just make those yellow, that'll really pop. So I'll say OK there. And now I can uh, once again see exactly where I'm going and how things are connected within my brain with these nice yellow links. So, and there's a lot you can do with the links as well. I'm going to right click and go right back into preferences. And there's so much that you can uh, uh, work with here for the look and feel of your brain. I can change the default link thickness. Uh, so that the links are much more bold in the background. Um, curved links, straight links, you can even add a nice little glow effect. So it's really however you picture your information fitting together. I kind of like this. I'll just make the links a little thinner and say OK. And then finally, Shelly mentioned grabbing an icon from the web. Um, once again, you can easily use that feature to capture For the, the thought icon. For just an image. It doesn't have to be an yeah, icon. Yeah, just an just image. Like from an image search. 
Here, I like this brain with the check. I'm going to right click and just copy this image. I've got that on my clipboard. And for my network map, I just want to make sure that people that visit my brain know that this thought is brain enabled. It's A-OK. -okay. I'm going to right click and now paste that as the thought icon. So once again, any image you find from the, the web, you can copy and paste right into the brain as well. All right, great. And um, I think the only other question, uh, first of all, I just want to let you know that we are on the hour. So for those of you that need to um, leave on the hour, no, no worries. The session is being recorded. A number of you did ask that. We, you will all automatically be emailed a link to this recording. And um, you can also, it will also be published and tweeted out and posted on our Facebook page as well tomorrow. A couple questions on... Um, building brains, copy and pasting sections from one brain to another, or how do I take and merging brains? So a question came in about how do I make one brain out of a couple different brains, and then also how do I take a section of a brain and make it its own brain? Great. Sure. So I'm going to go over to my client's area, and let's say I keep another separate brain for prospective clients. I don't want to start building out and putting all this work into this brain, um, uh, for a prospective client if I'm not going to permanently keep that information here. Um, so I've got another brain on a prospective client. Guess what? They signed on for 2016, so now I need to bring them into uh, clients by industry type. And this is a uh, client that is media and entertainment. And this is where I want to post that other brain, bring this, uh, this second brain in. So what I'm going to do is simply click on File, and I've got that other brain, I can open it to show you, but you'll see it here in just a moment. I'm gonna click on File and select to Merge Brain. So it's built right into the brain that you can merge smaller subsets into what I'm calling my master brain. This is my major client brain in the background. And I'm going to merge in a brain that I created for a client called Acrofile. So Acrofile has decided to, uh, to sign on, I'll say Open and just confirm that I do want to do this. Now, without me clicking anything, what is happening is uh, my main brain is closing, and my acrophile brain is opening up, copying all of the content, and pasting it here into my master brain. And there, it just happened. So all of my thought types, thought tags, my file attachments, Word documents, you can see I've got this spread out by different meeting notes, uh, budget documentation for 2016 for this client, the research that we did to see if we wanted this client to sign on, etc. It's all been copied into this one brain. Now that old acro file brain is, still exists, it's just been copied and a copy of it has been pasted here. So I can always refer back to that, but now that I've merged it into my master brain, this is where I will make updates moving forward in the future. Now, that's one direction to bring smaller brains all together into a master brain. We also have the question, how do I take a portion of my master brain and share that with other users or get it into a smaller brain that I can play around with or what have you. So let's go back to that client Time Warner and let's say I am going to hand off this project to someone else. The world is yours, is now being handed off to Steve. I don't want to give him my entire brain, but he uses the brain too, so I want to send him a zip of just this area of my brain. So we roll back to, uh, as Shelly showed us earlier, copying some thoughts. I can control click on an individual thought. I can control click on a gate. Um, so anything that I can control click on, and I'll do just send him the whole Time Warner area, so I'm control clicking on gates and thoughts and so forth. I can also click on a thought and say, so I could have just started with Time Warner and right click once I select Time Warner and say crawl and modify selection. I know I want everything below Time Warner in this example. So all childward thoughts for up to five generations away. And I don't think there's that much, much more. There it goes. It added a, a little bit more content that I had, it, uh, had somewhere five generations down from this thought. So there are my 30 thoughts. Now I can right-click, and I can copy these selected thoughts, and I'll create a new brain. So I'm creating this new brain for Steve, the Steve brain. And so he is taking over for this client. I want to send him all my information. I still have that on my clipboard. I can right-click on the background, 
and paste those thoughts. Yes, I want to confirm. Once again, I'm pasting in everything, all of the thought types, the tags, the documents, uh, link types, and uh, notes. It's all there. So 30 thoughts, and I may have had a few large file attachments, so it's taking a little bit of time, but eventually, there you can see, built right in. So I've got Time Warner. There's The World is Yours. All that content that, uh, that I rearranged today, it's all there. Now I've can share this with Steve, and there's a few ways I can do that as well. Um, really quickly, I can create a brain zip. So I click on file, and I select to create a brain zip. It zips this entire brain up into a single file that can easily be uh, delivered via email or moved onto a thumb drive and passed over to uh, Steve. But what I like to do is actually put this brain online. Um, so I'm going to actually sync this brain. Uh, with the cloud. So you can see I've never synced this brain to my account. All the brains that Shelly and I were using today were built locally on our machines, but we always have the option to sync those to the cloud. And once they're on the cloud, we can take a few more steps. I can just share them in read-only mode. There you can see my brain is online ready to go. So I'll log in to my account on the brain.com. So I just simply log in. And I can share this brain um, with Steve uh, as a reader, but Steve and I have um, actually enhanced our accounts with Team Brain Services. So I can actually, and there you can see the server is still preparing that particular brain, so I'll just jump into another one. JT Apparel is a brain that I share with Shelly. So I'll go into the settings for JT Apparel. And you can see right at the top, this is a publicly accessible brain. I can send anyone the URL, but I've also made Brigitte and Shelly editors they can download this brain and continue working on it locally. So the brain is as much theirs as it is mine, and uh, they can add new content. And again, whoever is responsible for editing uh, content shows up in the reports. We set up tags to assign thoughts to one another. It's a really, really great way to take your brain collaborative and uh, work on the same brain with multiple users. So that's another way that I can get this brain over to Steve. He can then take ownership of it and uh, move on with this client. All right, great. Well, uh, as you can see, uh, you, you did cover, there were a couple questions on sync and sharing. Um, and Great. I think we've got them all. So I think we've covered everything. Uh, I do want to remind everyone, uh, we focus a lot on changing a brain, not creating a brain from ground up. If you are a new user and you, you know, wanted to peer into the, you know, these more advanced editing, um, and you, but you still need a, some additional product training, no worries. We have the Brain 202 class or sorry, the 101 class, this is our 202 class, tomorrow <laughs> at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. That's either hosted by Matt or myself. So, And the class size is actually quite a bit smaller, too, so you can ask any questions. We also have advanced users that pop in at the end, so do join us for that. And then what we didn't cover today was file management, getting those files, and, and we have a seminar on that in a couple weeks, actually on February 11th. On uh, or is it 10th on and uh, it's the uh, one of the first Thursdays. Let me just look at my cat. Yes, February 11th on file management. So do join us for that as well. You can sign up off our homepage, and uh, all, you know all our webinars are always announced on Twitter or our Facebook pages. So you can sign up for those as well. Uh, and I think with that, we've covered uh, a lot of questions and uh, covered a lot of ground. Any, Matt, any final words of wisdom before we close our session on uh, editing and uh, gardening your brain? Sure. Well, I just want to hit on the, the – uh, you mentioned that this was the 202 class, so we did share with you some of the more advanced features of the application. Brain 101 is a great way to get started from the ground up, as well as visiting our website – plenty of resources for additional video tutorials and uh, documentation on the brain. So there are a lot of resources available for you there as well if you're just getting started with the brain. And you can always contact us at support at thebrain.com. We're happy to hear from you. All right, great. Well, with that, we wish you well in fine-tuning, editing, and evolving your brain. Finally, our latest blog post is all 
about some very notable brain users and their tips and tricks and approaches. So as we sort of embark on the new year and uh, you want to start evolving and changing your brain, check out that blog post. We also had a recent seminar on goal-directed visualization. So all this is tying into, you know, taking your productivity to the next level, evolving yourself through the process of information visualization and connections. And with that, uh, we hope to see you again on future Brain Technologies events and uh, uh, wish you all well in gardening your brain. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Thanks, day. Everyone.